الحمد لله وكفى وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على من لا نبي بعده وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا Al-Imam Sa'adi rahimahullah ta'ala has a tremendous book that is about Mahasin al-Islam, the beauty of Islam, where he talks about the various facets of Islam and the wisdoms connected to each of them, and the wisdoms for fasting, the wisdoms for zakat, the wisdoms for the laws of business transactions, etc., etc. That's called Ar-Riyadh al nadira Riyadh al Nadira, a very beautiful book, it's around 300 pages long. He has some beautiful speech about the Salat in that book. We're going to uh, base this talk, inshallah ta'ala, loosely, although we don't have the time to go through it verbatim, all of it, upon uh, that section in the book, Ar Riyadh al Nadira. The Shaykh Sa'ari, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Fameen Fadha'iliha. From the Fadail of the Salah, and Naha Adam Muribada Tinya, Surufi and Hudur, or the Lulilla, Umtila Al Kalbi, mean Al Imani Bihi Wata Adimi. From the greatest merits and virtues of the prayer is that it is, as we heard, it is the greatest act of worship by which a person can achieve humility and subservience for Allah. And by which a person can fill their heart with Iman, belief in Allah, and ta'adheem and veneration for Allah and recognition of His greatness. وَذَلِكَ مَادَةُ سَعَادَةِ الْقَلْبِ الْأَبَدِيَّةِ وَنَعِيمِهِ فَلَا يُمْكِنُ تَغْذِيَتُهُ بِمِثْلِ الصَّلَاةِ And that is the cause of the sa'adah of the heart for eternity. That is what will bring eternal happiness to the heart and bliss to the heart in this world and the next. وَلَا يُمْكِنُ تَغْذِيَتُهُ بِمِثْلِ الصَّلَاةِ And there is nothing that can nourish the heart, meaning the iman in a person's heart and cause it to grow like the salat, that can give life to his heart, and strength to his heart, like the salat. وَالصَّلَاةُ وَعَذَمُ غِذَاءٍ وَسَقِيُ لِشَجَرَةِ الْإِيمَانِ وَالصَّلَاةُ وَعَذَمُ غِذَاءٍ وَسَقِيُ لِشَجَرَةِ الْإِيمَانِ Salat therefore is the greatest thing to nourish and water the tree of faith inside of the heart. The tree of faith in the heart as we heard yesterday from Surah Ibrahim and in the parable of the tree of faith. And that faith, Iman consists of its roots which are belief and submission and the other actions of the heart connected to submission like love, etc, etc. And, he, and as a result of that comes the branches, which are the actions of a person and the statements of a person. And from that comes the thamarat, the fruits of faith, which is all of the good in this world and the next, happiness and success in this world and the next, guidance, prosperity, safety, security, all of that comes as a result of developing the tree of faith within the heart of the person, developing and cultivating the tree of faith within the heart of the person. It is the greatest thing to nourish. The salat is the greatest thing to nourish and to watch the tree of faith. The salat makes the iman of a person thabit and he, it makes his iman firm. The salat, it makes his iman firm. وَتُنَمِّيهِ And it grows his iman, causes his iman to increase. وَتُنَمِّي مَا يُثْمِرُهُ الْإِيمَانِ مِنْ فِعْلَ الْخَيْرِ وَرَغْبَةِ فِيهِ And it cultivates and develops what comes as a result of iman, what is grown from the fruits of, out of the fruits of faith, which is فِعْلَ الْخَيْرِ وَرَغْبَةِ فِيهِ The salat, it causes him to have an increase in goodness and he, that he wants to do more good outside of the salat it encourages him to do good and it increases his raghba 
his desire for goodness and his love for goodness. وَكَذَلِكَ تَنْهَا عَنَ الشَّرْ In the same way, it forbids the person and prevents the person from evil. So in this way, the salat helps a person with all of their religious endeavors. Everything that a person needs help with as it relates to their deen, then the salat itself by giving attention to the salat, learning how to pray better and giving more attention and focus to the salat and having more variety in what you say in the salat and giving more details to your salat as opposed to praying the generic salat of a new shahada or a person who is, who is brand new. That a person adds on to their knowledge and their skill as it relates to the salat and the more a person focuses upon the salat, the more it will help them as it relates to the rest of their religion. And how could that not be the case when a man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna shara'i al-Islam qad thaqulat alayya fa'awsini. Indeed, the commands, the laws of Islam are a lot for me. So give me an advice. What did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam advise him? Do not allow your tongue to be, to stop being moist with the dhikr of Allah. Make sure that you're moist, that your tongue stays moist and wet with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because the dhikr of Allah gives energy to a person. The scholars, they say that the malaika tas'adu, that they ascend and rise and fly up to Allah. Tabarak wa ta'ala wa tanzilu min indihi. بِالتَّسْبِيهِ وَالتَّكْبِيرِ وَالتَّحْمِيدِ They don't eat food to get energy. What gives them the strength that they have is their glorification and praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For that reason, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam إِذَا أَتَتْهُ بِنْتُهُ فَاطِمَ بِنْتُ Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And when his daughter Fatima came to him, when his daughter came to him, and asked him for a khadim, and asked him for a servant, and asked him for a servant. She came and she sat upon his bed, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, at the edge of his bed, and she asked her father, she said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, I heard that some captives have come from a particular endeavor, and I want a khadim, I want a servant. I need a servant for the affairs of my house. What did the Prophet Sallallahu tell her to do? He could have given her a servant, but what did he tell her to do? To, to do what particularly? Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, 33, 33 and 34, right? Before going to bed, before going to bed. This is something that will give a person, why? Because it is any munashit. Dhikr is munashit, and it gives a person energy. It gives a person energy. And that a person makes the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it gives him energy. So if a person is feeling lazy, and he, well, how did Allah describe the munafiqun in the Qur'an, that they don't stand to the salah in a kusala, except for very lazily, and they don't what? وَلَا يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا And they only make a little bit of dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why. Because their heart is not in it. They're not thinking about Allah. If they were actually thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and mindful of Allah and the greatness of Allah, then that would excite them. And that would excite them. And he, there is, and he, it is, uh, there is very little on this earth. And even if a person is tired and sick and so on and so forth, and he, that if a person is offered rather, if a person is offered something of great value, or a person is given a wa'ad, a, a promise of something great, uh, of great worth to him, except that it will excite that person. Unless that person is upon their deathbed, right? Except unless a person is upon a deathbed. You go to an outer in the community, he's sad, so on and so forth, he's lonely, he ain't got nobody. And you say, Shaykhana, or our older brother. There's this sister, alhamdulillah, she's a good 15, 20 years younger than you. A nice sister, you know, she asked about you. Said that all that will leave that brother. Right? Oh, he didn't have no energy before. Right? If you ask him to do something, it would probably be hard to take three steps, right? And so all Ibn, Ibn Hazm, he wrote a book about love called Tawq al hamama And he said, that's all the motivation a man needs to make any change for the good. 
If a man is stingy and a beautiful woman is interested in him, it'll make him generous. If he's a coward, it'll make him brave. If he's a liar, it should make an honest man out of him. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's a crook, should make an honest man out of him. Right? So how about standing in front of Allah? How about the dhikr of Allah? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one that all of that belongs to. The one biyadihi azimatul umur kulliha. That the control of the universe is in his hands, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who can literally move mountains. Subhanahu wa ta'ala without effort. If he so chose to do so. And so the dhikr of Allah is munashit. And he, it gives a person great energy. It gives a person great energy. And it helps a person as it relates to all of their religious affairs. As Shaykh Asari rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, so it causes a person to increase in their motivation and their excitement for good and to uh, decrease from evil. As Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Ankabut, verse number 45, He said, recite, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what has been revealed to you of the book, of the scripture, of the Quran, and establish the salat, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ Indeed, the salat prevents a person, forbids a person from الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ from lewd, immoral behavior, and from evil and wickedness. وَلَذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ And the dhikr of Allah is akbar. And Allah's dhikr, the dhikr of Allah is akbar, is the greatest thing. It is the greatest thing. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions in Madari Zusari Kina before that, finish the statement of Asadi here. Asadi says that Allah informs us here that this ghidha bi dhikr Allah wa shifa bi nahiha an al fahshai wa munkar. Yani that fiha, that the salah contains within it that which nourishes a person through the dhikr of Allah. That it nourishes the person, meaning it strengthens his iman with the dhikr of Allah and it cures him. It contains within it ghidha'un wa shifa'un. Nourishment and cure. And it nourishes him, provides him strength, and it cures him from sickness. And it cures him from sickness by preventing him from lewd, immoral, wicked, and evil behavior. And what could be greater and more phenomenal than that? That the salat contains within a ghidha un shifa. It contains within the nourishment by way of the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to excite and to motivate the person. And it contains within a shifa. It contains within it the cure for the sickness of his heart. Because you have to have a takhliya qabla tahliya. Because you have to remove impurities and sicknesses and diseases and obstacles before you can grow anything. Before you can grow anything, the process of growing anything in this world of a physical nature or a spiritual nature is a takhliya thumma tahliya, a shifa thumma ghida. And he is to cure something and then to nourish that thing. To nourish that thing to health and to strength and to growth and so on and so forth. If a person is going to grow something, they have to remove the pebbles and the stones and the weeds and the impurities from the soil, etc., etc. And then they can plant their seeds and they can water them and they can nourish them and so on and so forth to see what they have planted grow to its fullest. And so this is the reality of the salat that Allah has mentioned, that it contains within it ghidha'un by way of dhikr and shifa'un. And either the salat it contains within a nourishment and it contains within it a cure. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions about this statement in Surah Al-Ankabut, a very, very weighty and beneficial benefit of the different ways of the scholars of tafsir explain this verse. And he mentions four different ways. Three of them are common in the books of tafsir. The other is a tafsir that he heard and he learned from his shaykh, Shaykh with Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, who said that his view or that this understanding, this fourth understanding, is the strongest of all of them. However, the principle in tafsir is that if we have ihtimalat, if we have possible meanings, then all of them are intended so long as they do not oppose one another. And so all of these meanings, as we'll come to see, are valid meanings and have a basis in the religion. However, some of them are stronger than others. Some of them are stronger than others. What do we take from this verse? 
that the salat prevents a person from fahsha and munkar. And what is greater than everything is the dhikr of Allah. And what is greater than everything is the dhikr of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala ibn Qayyim, rahimullah ta'ala, he said, wa fiha arba'atu aqwal. That there are four different statements of the scholars as relates to this verse. Ahaduha, the first. Anna dhikr Allahi akbar min kulli shay, fa huwa afdar ta'at. That the dhikr of Allah is greater than everything else. That the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than everything else. Ibn Qayyim wrote a whole book about dhikr that is called, who knows? Al-Wabil Usayyib min al-Kalim al-Tayyib. And he mentions the benefits of dhikr along these lines. But the Salaf al-Salihin, they said that the best people in any act of worship, the best of the Sa'imin, the best of the Mutasaddiqeen, the best of any people, and the reward that they get while they are doing what they are doing are those who were making the most dhikr of Allah, thinking about Allah the most while they were doing what they were doing. And so this is the first meaning, that the dhikr of Allah is greater than every other thing. That the dhikr of Allah is greater than everything. Remembering Allah and being mindful of Allah is greater than every other thing. And the, and the dhikr in and of itself is the greatest and most virtuous act of obedience. Because the purpose of all acts of obedience is to establish the dhikr of Allah, as we heard in our early session, earlier session before Salatul Asr. And in that, the dhikr of Allah, the whole deen is the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The whole purpose of everything that we do is to establish the remembrance of Allah in our lives and in the earth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the first of the four explanations. And so it is the inner component and the driving wisdom and the soul and the spirit and he, that drives all acts of obedience. The dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ruh, it is the spirit what motivates the person and gives the person the energy to engage in all acts of worship as we heard. Athani, the second, أَنَّكُمْ إِذَا ذَكَرْتُمُوهُ ذَكَرَكُمْ The second, Akbar and he, and the dhikr of Allah is even greater. And the dhikr of Allah is even greater, meaning that Allah's dhikr of you, because Allah dhakara man dhakara. Allah mentions those who mention him. Allah mentions those who mention him, and that is greater than whatever you did. If you glorified and praised Allah, and the fact that Allah mentioned you as insignificant as you are. And as small as we all are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah would hear us glorify and praise Him, and He would mention us with goodness in front of Al Mala'ul in front of the angels and the souls of the believers in the highest part of the paradise. And so Allah, Yadhkuru man dhakara. Allah mentions those who mention Him. And this is something that should bring a person to tears, as God, as they say. They quote the statement of Ubay, of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi to Ubay ibn Uqab, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi told Ubay ibn Uqab to recite something of the Qur'an to him. Ubay ibn Uqab, he said, Awa la wa baka. He said, did Allah mention my name? And he cried. Did Allah mention my name? And he cried. Imagine that Allah, because you glorify and praise Allah, that Allah will mention your name to his angels, that Allah will mention you at all. That Allah yadhkuru man dhakara. That's the greatest motivation. What more motivation does a person need to make dhikr of Allah, to remember Allah, than knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will mention you. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will mention you. And so this is the second meaning. He said, فَعَلَى هَذَا الْمَصْدَرْ مُضَافٌ إِلَى الْفَاعِلْ أَيَذَّاكِرْ وَعَلَى الْأَوَّلْ مُضَافٌ إِلَى الْمَذْكُورْ He said, and so based upon these two explanations, the first group they understood that dhikr, the dhikr of Allah is remembering Allah. That you remembering Allah as a dhakir, as a person who is making dhikr. And he, that that is greater than any other deed. And the second group they understood that the dhikr of Allah is Allah's dhikr of you. That Allah's dhikr of His creation. Allah mentioning His creation. Thirdly, al-ma'ana and al-ma'ana وَنَا ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرْ مِنَ تَبْقَ مَعْهُ فَاحِشَةٌ وَمُنْكَرْ Some of them they said that the dhikr of Allah, if a person is truly making dhikr of Allah, then that dhikr is greater. That the dhikr of Allah is greater than 
their being able to remain alongside it, any type of fahisha and munkar, any type of fahisha and munkar. And as comes in the one on story reported by Ibn Rajab and others, that a man rawad amra'atan an nafsiha wa khala biha fi fana ba'irin an ayun an nas fa'abat fa'abat faqana la yarana illa al-kawakib faqanat rahimahallah wa ayna mu kawkibuha ay khariquha wa malikuha that a man once seduced a woman took her far away into the woods or into the fields or so on and so forth away from the eyes of the people and when he was about to lay with her she stopped him and he said baby nobody sees us but the stars nobody sees us but the stars she said where's the one who made these stars what about the one who made the stars and so that a person thinks about Allah and the greatness of Allah and the punishment of Allah and the reward that comes as a result of patience and so on and so forth, that a person thinks about Allah and remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the dhikr of Allah is greater than they should, should be able to stand up against it, any type of fahsha and munkar. It should stop a person from fahsha and munkar. To the point that if a person, and he completes the requirements of dhikr, that if a person is making dhikr as they should be making dhikr throughout the day, that this dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will erase and destroy and get rid of and stop every disobedience and every error from them. This is what is mentioned by the Mufassirun. This is what is mentioned by the Mufassirun. The fourth, he said, I heard Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala yaqul ma'an al-ayah I heard Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah ta'ala say that the meaning of this verse anna fi salati fa'idatayn azimatayn is that salat has two tremendous benefits in it ihdahuma nahyuha an al-fahsha'i wal-munkar the first is that it stops a person from lewd and moral behavior of a sexual nature and all evil and wickedness and the second ishtimaluha ala dhikrillah wa tadhammunuha lah is that it contains within it the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and comprises all throughout of the dhikr of Allah, of the glorification and mention and praise of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, wa lama tadhammanatu min dhikr Allah, a'adhamu min nahi an al-fahshai wa munkar and that what is even greater than the fact that the salah prevents you from fahshai and munkar is what is found in it of the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is found in it of the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a greater benefit than the fact that the salah will prevent you from destructive behavior. The fact that the salah will prevent you from destructive behavior, from lewd immorality and wickedness and so on and so forth. That what is even greater than all of that is what is found in the salah of the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we just mentioned that there is a causality, there is a connection between the two. The more a person makes dhikr, the more they are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more they will be protected from their own self and the urges of their own self. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala will close with this benefit from Ibn Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi, although there is much more that can be said and that I have from the speech of Asadi rahimahullah ta'ala, out of his holiday traffic out here, I gotta get home. He says, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his book Zad al-Ma'ad, in the medicine of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he, how the salat is a cure for sickness and for all problems. The salat is a cure for all problems that helps a person in solving all problems and it helps cure a person from disease and sickness, from all sorts of awja'. He said, Allah ta'ala, he said, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَىٰ عَنَ الْخَاشِعِينَ Seek the assistance of patience and prayer for all of your matters. And indeed that is very difficult for everyone except for the khashi'een, except for those who have khushur and their salah. And Allah ta'ala, He said, commanding this ummah towards the middle point of Surah Al-Baqarah, past the middle point of Surah Al-Baqarah after addressing the Yahud and addressing the Muslims after the changing of the Qibla. Allah ta'ala, He said, Ya ayyuhan adhina amanu sta'inu bil sabri wa salat, inna allaha ma'a asabirin. O oh, you who believe, seek the assistance of patience and prayer. Indeed, Allah is with those who are patient. Meaning, 
He is with them in his support and his guiding them and so on and so forth. وَقَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى Allah exalted be the Most High, He said, وَأَمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاسْتَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا And He command your family with the prayer and be patient, be very patient in doing so. Be very patient in commanding them to pray. لَا نَسْأَلُكَ رِزْقَا Allah and His greatness doesn't expect or ask any sustenance from us. نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُكَ وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلتَّقْوَى It is Allah and His greatness who provides for you. And the aqiba is for a taqwa. The end result of affairs will always favor those who feared Allah. Tabarak wa ta'ala. This is verse number 132 of Surah Taha. So in this verse, Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala alluded to the connection between al-rizq wa salat. That by establishing the salat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for His servants. وَفِي السُّنَنِي كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ إِذَا حَزَبُهُ أَمْرٌ فَزِعِ لِلصَّلَاةِ It is authentic in the books of Sunan. The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم as was reported that occurred on the day of Al-Badr, Al-Kubra on the day of the Khandaq, the day of the Ahzab, the battle of the Ahzab, the battle of the trench. That the Messenger of Allah إِذَا حَزَبُهُ أَمْرٌ فَزِعِ لِلصَّلَاةِ وَفِي حَدِيثٍ آخر وَكَانَتَ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ إِذَا حَزَبَهُمْ أَمْرٌ فَزِعَ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ That whenever the Prophet ﷺ was troubled or vexed by any matter, he would turn to the prayer, meaning to calm his heart. He would turn to the prayer, meaning to ask for the help of Allah. He would turn to the prayer for الْإِسْتِعَانَ عَلَى الْمَهَامِ And he'd to aid him in very important matters that faced himself and his community sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and there is likewise an authentic hadith there is an authentic hadith that mentions that when the prophets it mentions the story you don't have time for the story it mentions that when the prophets were hazabahum amrun and when they were vexed by any matter troubled by any matter that they would turn for solace to the prayer that they would turn fazi'ah fazi'u ila salat they would turn to the salat they would turn to the Salat. Muhammad ibn Nasr al-Marwazi, he says, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon him. I know we said Ibn Qayyim's statement was the last, but this is interlaced with Ibn Qayyim's statement, so I'm going to parenthetically mention it here. Yeah. Muhammad ibn Nasr al-Marwazi, rahimullah ta'ala, in his book, Venerating the Salat of the Salat, has a very lengthy section where he brings the stories of the prophets and the messengers, one after another after another, and the stories of the early generations of Islam who when they were vexed with any matter, troubled by any disturbing matter, that they would turn to the Salat. That they would turn to the Salat. And he said, ta'ala, wa innaha la kabira tunila ala khashi'een and he that to seek the assistance of the patient of patience in the prayer, as Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala has commanded, he said, and that is difficult for everyone except for the Khashi'een and they are those whose Hearts break down in humility out of recognition of Allah's majesty, wa rahbatan minhu, out of fear of Allah, fa shahid ali man haqat alayhi an yuqimaha lahu. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has testified that the believers established the salat for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to aid them in their affairs. إِنَّهُ مِنَ الْخَاشِعِينَ And that those who do so, they are from the khashi'een. He said, وَكَيْفَ لَا يَفْزَعُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ وَهِيَ عِمَادُ دِينِهِمْ This comes in a hadith. رَأْسُ الْأَمْرِ الْإِسْلَامِ وَعَمُودُهُ الصَّلَاةِ And he that the head of the matter, the most important thing in existence is Islam. And the عمود of Islam is the salat. The عمود of, the عمود of, of Islam the umud of something, the umud of something is the most important pillar. The most important pillar that everything else depends upon. Of a house or a tent or something of the sort. And if, the, if it wasn't upright, then the tent would collapse. Then the tent would collapse. And so, in the Arabic language, words like this, like rukun. أَنَّ لِي بِكُمْ أَوْ Rukni Shadid, the statement of Lut, when the uh, sissies tried to do what they tried to do. When the angels came as guests and he said, 
If I only had the physical strength to deal with you, or I had a strong rukun pillar to turn to, meaning a strong family to turn to. So words like pillar, they are used as is found in this hadith, and its supporting pillar, the most important supporting pillar of Islam is the salat. They are used for that which a person leans on to support them. What a person leans on to support their self, to hold their self up. Meaning that if a person is in hardship, that what they can lean upon and take recourse to and seek shelter with and fortify their self with is the salah. Is the salah. And then he brings those ahadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ibn Qayyim, he says in closing, to مَجْبَلَةٌ وَقَتَ قَدَمَ ذِكْرُ الْإِسْتِشْفَاءِ بِالصَّلَاةِ مِنْ عَامِتِ الْأَوْجَاعِ قَبْلِ اسْتِحْكَامِهَا He says, and previously in this book, we mentioned how, meaning in the medicine of the Prophet, from the book Zad and Ma'ad, Ibn Qayyim said, we mentioned how a person can cure their self by way of the salah from the majority of sicknesses before their istihkam, before they can become chronic problems. A person can cure their self by way of turning to the salah and being focused in the salat and that sort of thing. Then he said, وَصَلَاتُ مَجْبَلَةٌ الْرِزْقِ Salat is something that brings about risk and sustenance for the person. حَافِذَةٌ لِلصُحَّةٌ It safeguards the health of a person. دَافِعَةٌ الْأَذَى It wards off and protects a person from annoyance and harm and abuse. مَطْرَدَةٌ الْأَدْوَاهِ and it deflects from him all sorts of disease and sickness. Muqawiyatun al qalb. It strengthens the heart. Mufarrihatun al nafs. It brings joy and elation and happiness to the soul. Mudhibatun al kasal. It removes laziness from a person. Munashitatun al jawarih. And it energizes the limbs. Mumedda lil quwa. Mumedda. Mumeddatun lil quwa. And it reinforces a person with all sorts of internal and external strength. Sharihatun al-sadr and it opens up the chest of a person and makes it less tight. Mughadhiyatun al-ruh and it nourishes the soul. Munawiratun al-qalb and it enlightens and illuminates the heart. Mubayyidatun al-wajh and it brightens and beautifies the face. Hafidatun al-na'ma Ibn Qayyim in his book about love, Rawdat al muhibbin he brings a section on the formula for love and how beauty is necessary for love, internal and external beauty, and how some of the most beautiful women in the early generations of Islam were asked by the other woman, what was their secret? They say, Auntie, you're 45 years old and you look like you're about 19. What's your secret? What's your secret? They see women that they say are drop dead gorgeous, women that were infamous for their beauty amongst the Arab. Perhaps infamous is not the best word to use there. And famous for their beauty. Amongst the Arab. And they were asked, what was their secret? And they said, praying in the night. <coughs> praying in the night. It beautifies and brightens the face. It's a secret of beauty. And he helps a person with their good looks. And he, that they establish the salat. It brightens and puts light and beauty upon the face. And it safeguards the blessings that you have. As Imam Ahmad rahimullah ta'ala, he said, Dum ala ma arad Allah, yadum laka ala ma turid. Maintain a practice that is love to Allah, and Allah will maintain for you what you have. Meaning He will not take away from you the blessings that you have. If a person wants to maintain their blessings, they need to show gratitude to Allah by way of the salat and by way of worship. So it safeguards and protects their blessings. Dafi'atul niqmah, and it protects them from Allah's punishment. Jalibatul baraka and it procures and brings about and facilitates blessing. Mubidatun mina shaytan, muqarribatun mina rahman, and it distances you far away from the shaytan and the shaytan far away from you, and it brings you close to ar rahman subhanahu fi ula. Wa bil jumla, and in summary, falaha ta'athirun ajibun. The salata has an amazing effect and impact. في حفظ صحة البدن والقلب وقواهما and safeguarding the health of the body and the heart and the strength of the body and the heart. In summary, he said, this is what the salat does. It safeguards the health of the body and the heart 
and the strength of the body and the heart and it protects the body and the heart from harmful substances. And he said, and there are no two men who are tested with this exact same calamity or sickness or trial or hardship, except that how the person experiences it who is consistent and regular in their prayer is far less and it is easier for them than the one who is not like that. And their aqiba is aslam and the end result of the affair is safer and better for the one who is diligent in their prayer. This is the end of what I have uh, to present. We ask Allah to make us of those who listen to the word of God and who listen to it. We hear what we hear and follow the best of what we heard. In the same way, the same way, the For those that are traveling, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make you from amongst those. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described when he said, إِذَا زَارَ أَحَدُكُمْ أَخَاهُ فِي اللَّهِ يُنَادِ مُنَادٍ And when one of you visits his brother for the sake of Allah, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, then a caller calls out and قَدْ تِبْتُمْ وَطَابَ مَمْشَاكُمْ وَتَبَوَأْتُمْ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ نُزُولًا That you have done something tayyib, you have done something pure and righteous and your footsteps are pure and righteous and you have prepared for yourself, you have ready for yourself a nuzul, a diyafa meaning a hosting, an honorable hosting in the paradise. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reunite us all and in a world where there is no sadness or anxiety or sorrow. And the Salat, brothers, is one of the most important things to focus on in our communities. If we were to focus upon praying together and learning together, and you leave off the riffraff and the whisperings and the boredom of people who just like to stir controversy and confusion and so on and so forth, we would be doing ourselves a great favor. This is the advice of our scholars over the past many years that they gave us in establishing Masajid. I remember uh, around 12 years ago when I lived here you know, as the Imam of the Masjid before it was called Masjid Abu Bakr. And it was called Masjid Allah. I remember a brother, a dear brother that I still know came to me in my office and he said, what's the plan brother Imam? I said, what you mean? He said, for the community, what we get, how are we going to grow this community? I said, oh man, and I was a little young and more facetious than I am now, believe it or not. So I actually gave him a piece of paper and a pen. I was sitting at my desk. He said, you mind you write this down, right? He said, because I was thinking I had some ideas, you know, like we could go to city council meetings and we could do this. He had like this whole plan of like community activism and a whole body, you know. And I said, I got something that is guaranteed to work every time. What we're going to do, we're going to come to the masjid as often as we can find the time to come to the masjid and we're going to pray together and we're going to learn together. He was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, he wrote it down, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, he wrote it down. I was like, that's it. That's it. That's enough. That's Imaratul Masajid. And in the books of Fiqh, in the books of Tafsir, Imaratul Masajid, whole books have been written. In modern times, about I any mean, what is collected in the statements of scars about Imarat and Masajid. Inna ma yamuru Masajid Allah Masajid Allah man amana billahi wa niyamul akhir. Any the Imarat and Masajid, the frequenting and the supporting, the maintenance of masjids, etc., etc. That is the pillar of it. Praying together and learning together. That is what brings light and life to the community. That is what will revolutionize our approach to Islam if we were to do that accurately and correctly. That is the cause of islah. That is the cause of rectification of the individual and the families and the societies. And the history of Islam is khayru shahid, is the best evidence for that, and the best testimony for that. Alhamdulillah, this is what the Prophet Sallallahu said when he said, إِنَّمَا بُنِيَتْ هَذِهِ الْمَسَاجِ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَإِقَامِتْ الصَّلَاةِ وَالْقُرْآنِ These masajid were only built for the following reasons. The only purpose for the building of the masajid, إِنَّمَا بُنِيَتْ هَذِهِ الْمَسَاجِدِ إِنَّمَا تَوْكِيدْ الْإِثْبَاتِ مَا النَّفِي 
Hasr. Innama buniyat hadihi al-masajid. The only reason, without a doubt, is what innama means. Buniyat built. These masajid, they were only built for the remembrance of Allah. وَالْإِقَامِةُ الصَّلَاةِ For the establishment of the salat. وَالْقُرْآنِ And the recitation of the Qur'an. The dhikr of Allah, the recitation of the Qur'an is the asal of ilm. It's the foundation of knowledge. The early generations of Islam, they were dur sunnah. They were the houses of sunnah. The most important person in every city, in every land, the most important place was not the qasr of the malik. It was not the castle of the king. It wasn't the government building. It wasn't the courthouse and anything of the sort. It wasn't the treasury. The most important building in every city and the earliest, most prosperous generations of Islam was the Masjid Jamir. Was the largest masjid that brought all the people together. Where the people came for the khutbah, where the people came for the durus, where the people came in the morning time because the classes of the scholars traditionally were always in the morning time. Not at the end of the day when people are tired and lazy and so on and so forth. To hear Quran, Hadith, Arabic language, etc., etc., etc. This is what caused the Muslims to prosper. Praying together and learning together. Praying together and learning together. Young and old, this is what brought them together. This is what harmonized and unified their ranks. This is the key to success. Everything else is just fluff. Everything else that people say, if it doesn't aid towards these things, if these things are not given the highest priority and any other thing that can be mentioned is just how we can maintain and sustain these masajid and the functions of these masajid. And then it's not even worth our time. It's not worth al tifat It's not worth the distraction. It's not worth the distraction. It is from the shaitan. No matter what a person's intentions are. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to busy ourselves with the good and to distance ourselves from fitna and his people. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for al-afu al-afiyah wa al-mu'afat fi dunya wa al-akhira. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for al-yaqeen. We ask Allah for certainty and for safety and well-being and for clemency and pardon. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward the administration of this masjid. Alhamdulillah, the brothers have been holding on the fort for a long time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward Abdul Malik and Amir and whoever else is on the administration these days. Our brother Abdul Ali, I don't know if he's on the admin. Any of the rest of the brothers, alhamdulillah, who are the Ansar, any of the helpers of the Sunnah and the helpers of the Dawah in this area. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless everybody for coming on and participating. Hadha wa sallam wa humma wa sallam wa barik ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala ali wa sahbihi wa sallam. Any questions on the topic for your notes? Um, uh, so, you said the three things that the Muslims should have. About? Right. The first was turning to your heart and safeguarding it from harmful thoughts and whisperings that can invalidate or decrease the reward of the salah. Right. The second was turning to Allah with muraqaba, turning to Allah with muraqaba, and he being mindful that Allah hears, sees, and knows you as you are praying, and Allah is watching you as you are praying, and to worship and to try to worship Allah as though you see Allah. It's the second thing. The third was, by what? Focusing upon the meanings of the speech of Allah as you recite the Quran, and as you go through the motions of the Salah, to look at the details of what you are doing, and to think about the meanings and the relevance of what you are doing, and the significance of what you're doing. So, yeah. Uh, anybody got that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 132, right. 132. Huh? What book? I'm reading from like eight books, right? <laughs> There's a book translated called The Inner Dimensions of the Prayer. I have no idea what that book is, though. But they call it the inner dimensions of prayer. There's, um, there is a book translated called Ibn Qayyim's letter to one of his brothers, right? That contains within some things that I didn't mention. Has a lengthy section about how that what a person can do to make the salat the coolness of their eye and the peace of their soul. And mentions the six mashahid, which are sincerity, uh, emulating the Prophet in the salat, uh, having uh, drive and determination, any azima, any having muraqaba, like we mentioned here. And he have an ihsan, mashhadul ihsan, and he worshiping Allah with the mindfulness that Allah 
sees you trying to worship Allah, so you can see Allah subhanahu wa, subhanahu wa ta'ala and he worshiping Allah and he performing the salat realizing that it's an enormous blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, performing your salat while thinking about your shortcomings and your flaws and trying to fix yourself is a weighty discussion, a very important discussion that mentions those six things, six mashahid. Go back to that, alhamdulillah, that's a very good resource. Alhamdulillah, those six things that he mentions there, they are not just the right of Allah as relates to the prayer, but they are, as Ibn Qayyim says in another book, Iratha to Lahfan, in a few places, they are the right of Allah in every act of worship. They are the right of Allah in every act of worship, and the most important act of worship is the Salah. Ibn Qayyim's letter to one of his brothers. Ibn Qayyim is a paperback book, it's about 130, 140 pages or so, I think, the translation. And he resala to Ibn Qayyim. Risala to Ibn Qayyim ila ahad ikhwani. Ibn Qayyim's letter to one of his brothers, meaning one of his friends, Abdul Wahid was his name, I believe. Uh -huh. It means pillar. Right. Now, mood of something is like when you have a tent and it's the main pillar that keeps the tent up. Like a pole or a pillar. Take a nap. That's <laughs> bad. right? You know, <laughs> you take the you take the physical means. You take the spiritual means. Those are the spiritual means. Might need a nap. Might need some coffee. <laughs> you need, might need to get away from people or things that are draining you too. You know, no. I don't know. It's, it's a, a collection of causes for any particular thing, right? <laughs>